Hello everyone and welcome back to the final part of making a boss in Minecraft Easy Edition. Although I'm sure at this point many of you are seriously doubting the easy tag I've thrown onto this, huh? <laughs> well, I promise today is the last video in the series and will be much simpler than the rest. In our last three episodes, we took care of all the heavy lifting from summoning, designing, and refining our boss into a Minecraft-worthy boss fight. All that's left for us to do now is tie up loose ends and add in final polish, such as effects and loot. Plus, I'll have a showcase at the end of today's video of the actual fight with the Slime King, so make sure you stick around to see how it all comes together. So, without further ado, let's finish this boss. So what do I mean when I say we have a few loose ends to deal with when it comes to our Slime King? Well, if we summon it, first things first, we notice right away that the Slime King's health bar isn't filling up visually for some reason. That's a pretty big disconnect between the player's anticipation of this boss fight and the presented encounter. Luckily, this is actually a pretty easy fix and is just one example of finally making those closing decisions on how you want your boss to behave. Remember in the first episode I said that a few of the values would be subject to change later? Well, now is later, so I hope you still have your values on hand. But before we jump back to MC Stacker to edit our boss for a final time, we need to make sure the actual boss bar is designed to match our boss. If we look back in our summon boss command, you can see that we set our boss to be summoned with a max health of 120. But if I take a look at the max value of our boss bar by doing slash boss bar get and then our boss bar and max, you can see that the custom boss bar that we set up actually only has a maximum value of 100, which is less than the 120 max of our King Slime. I had only set it to be 100 originally before I actually knew the health of our slime. So to change that, we can just do slash boss bar set, then the name of our boss bar, which is Minecraft colon Slime King, and then we'll go to the max value, and then we can just go ahead and type in 120 and press enter. And there you go, you can see that our new maximum has changed from 100 to be 120. Again, these values are your own, and you don't have to follow along number for number, just make sure your boss bar matches the health of your boss, to make sure it looks correct when your players fight it. Now, this doesn't fix the bar not filling up, but we'll get to that. Now, as far as everything else visually goes, we have a pretty good fight here. I might go and adjust some of our ability timer values, depending on how long I want to make this fight, but... That's something I can do off camera to tweak it to be exactly what I want. Remember, you can set all your timer values to be as fast or as slow as you want. So with the rest of the boss looking great, let's head over to MC Stacker to clean up a few more issues. All right, back in MC Stacker. Luckily, MC Stacker has this brilliant feature which allows you to import existing commands, meaning we don't have to recreate our entire boss from scratch if we previously closed the website. If I click on this and just paste in our current boss summon command from our very first summon command block, press import, you can see all of the values fill out here in the website of MC Stacker. Just like we said, max health is set to 120. So why isn't the bar filling up? Well, that's because the actual health of the slime on summon hasn't been set meaning it's probably defaulting to 20 or however slime health is normally calculated. So in this health field right here, we want to make sure this is also set to be 120. This should fix our health bar problem. But wait, we had another problem last episode where the slime was taking fall damage. Surely that's something we can change here as well? Well, the answer is sort of. You see, there's no flag I can turn on to just make this entity take no fall damage. I can make it left-handed, I guess, but it's not super important for this encounter. But we can emulate this feature by giving our boss hidden enchanted armor. Because a slime, and most mobs in Minecraft, exhibit no visual cues for wearing gear, we can actually go to its armor or equipment slots over here, specifically the boots, click edit item, and then give our slime a pair of boots that we can enchant. So I'll just give it a pair of iron boots. We can come down to these enchantments right here, and we can enchant it with feather falling, let's say level 30. This should allow our big guy to slime slam with ease without taking damage. And the player will never know that your boss is secretly wearing the new Air Jordans. Now it should be noted that there are a couple mobs that are the exception to this. Just like in my pumpkin video, those include most humanoid type mobs. 
things like strays, husks, drowned, skeletons, zombies. These creatures all use a similar player model-esque model, so they actually can display shown gear. Like if you give them a sword in their hand or their offhand, it will be visible, or a helmet or something to wear on their head, you'll be able to see it. But luckily for us, this mob does not fall into that category, so to the players, these iron boots are going to be completely invisible. Now, even though I don't imagine the boss fight to go on for a very long time, or for the players to figure out this and find some way to exploit armor durability, we can also set these boots to just be unbreakable. Which is probably in the best practice for our future bosses as well. That should take care of our fall damage problem as well. But now that we're here, this is also a great opportunity to talk about loot from your boss. In my Pumpkin boss video, I set up some pretty complex detection methods to drop items near players' feet once they killed the boss, RPG style. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to make use of the rest of the equipment slots method. Again, because there is no visual for slimes wearing armor, or any item for that matter, we can simply fill its equipment slots with items we want our boss to drop. What will still happen is even though they're invisible items, all entities in Minecraft can have a chance to drop any equipment they are carrying, even if it can't be seen. This is a much simpler method than creating your own death loot table and data pack to go along with it. This is definitely something we'll do in an intermediate or advanced boss tutorial, but for something like this, we can keep it restricted to the equipment slots. I tend to gravitate towards the armor slots because some items in Minecraft actually do have damage values, like if I want my boss to drop a sword, I don't actually want it to be in the holding or offhand as that might actually damage the player. So you can make your boss drop whatever you want, but for my example, I'm going to have it drop two things with a small chance of a third. The first will be a special weapon you obtain for killing the boss, called the Slime Saber. If I go ahead to this head slot here and click Edit Item, we're going to make this an Iron Sword. We'll come over to the name field, and we'll just name it Slime Saber. I want this to look a little fancy, so I will actually give this the color of green. And let's also enchant this with lots of knockback to give it a bouncy effect. Once we've finished customizing it to our liking, you'll see this little drop chance box right here. Now, this has to be a value between 0 and 1, and this determines how likely it is for your item to drop when the mob is killed. 0 means the player can never get this item to drop, and 1 means it will drop 100% of the time. Because I want this to always drop, I will enter 1. Now that's it for our first item, which we put in the head slot. For the second item the boss will drop, let's make it a handful of emeralds. So I'll just set this to emerald. Because you can't do variated counts with just equipped drops, we'll have to set this to always drop a certain number. For now, let's say 8 emeralds. Perfect, that was an easy one. Now for the final item, which we'll hide in the leg slot, I want it to be a rare drop that can be used for trading elsewhere on my server. Something players might have to grind the boss for. For this, I just want to set the item to be a slime ball and give it the enchantment of just the glint so it looks special. And if we go to the name, we can go ahead and call this the Slime King Core. We don't have to change this color, but why don't we also go ahead and add a lore field to let players know what they can do with it. And let's just say a unique, valuable item. Cool. This is all just my own flavor text. You can make your items whatever you want. Now, if we go down to drop chance here, and this time enter, let's say, 0.2, this item will only drop with a 20% chance, or every 1 in 5 times. And that's all there is for adding loot to your boss. Granted, this is very simple, so you can't do anything fancy like rolling a loot table multiple times, or varying your loot depending on the number of players fighting your boss. But for an easy level boss, this works great. Oh, and before we forget, let's make sure we set the drop chance of those feather falling boots to zero. Wouldn't want the players to learn our secrets. All right, then keep your secrets. Good. Now, the very last thing that we could add here that we haven't talked about before is down here in this tag section. Tags are a great way to keep track of specific entities in your world especially if you're having more encounters like the Slime King. For example, I could give our boss the tag boss, and then whenever I'm in game, I can interact with all entities tagged boss simply by adding that tag into my command structure. As an example, I could kill any entity with the boss tag on my server with just one command. 
I'm not going to use this outside of just this demo, but I'll add the boss tag just to show you that it can be done and you can do whatever you want with it. Now, lastly, if you want, it's a good idea to check your boss's stat values and change them if you need. Things like the initial damage or movement speed. I'm pretty happy with where they are for now, and honestly, I might change them later after some more testing, but let's get back to the game. Now that we're back in the game, we'll have to replace our initial summon command with the new one copied from MC Stacker. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and test to make sure everything is working. So, as you can see, the health bar completely fills up, which is a great sign. And if we take a look at our Feather Falling Boots, you can see that the King of Slimes does actually still take a little bit of fall damage. Maybe we have to up the enchantment, but that's something we can always go back to later. Because sure enough, if we slay the King of Slimes <laughs> there on the ground, you can see we drop the Slime Saber and eight emeralds. And looks like we didn't get lucky and end up getting that Slime Core. Now, something quick to note, as I had done a little bit more testing... If your sword is dropping, or any sort of weapon or armor is dropping, and you notice that it has damage durability, despite the boss not using it or even spawning it in with damage durability, this is because the way Minecraft handles dropped equipment loot, sometimes Minecraft randomizes how much damage a piece of gear actually has when it is rolled. If you want to circumvent this, that 100% drop chance we gave to this slime saber where we put the 1, put a 2 instead, and no, this doesn't increase the drop chance to 200. It still stays at a 100% drop chance, but it will contain its perfect durability. So we are fast approaching the end here. If we think about it, everything is pretty much a closed loop at this point. We have our boss with its health bar. We have a timer that changes and depends on different attacks. We have the slimelings that get summoned that you just saw a couple seconds ago. We have the power jump pads that we, of course, built in our arena video. And again, if you want to see how we made those, there is a video up for the patrons now, if that sort of thing interests you, which is what all these timers are for. We, of course, also built the fancy slime slime ability last time. And of course, we have our very important failsafe for once the King of Slimes is actually dead, and it is supposed to be dead by keeping boss lives matching zero, which we have set to be in our boss death right here. Then it will teleport all the children of the King of Slimes into the void and make sure they don't stick around on the map. Now, you could argue that we are actually finished. We have a way to summon the boss, it drops loot, and everything visually is there. Yeah, sure, maybe there's some things we want to tweak with the timers or damage values once we test on our own accord, but something is still missing. We don't have that flare. Right now, we just kind of summon the boss, and yeah, you can sort of make that whatever you want if you want to have levers or buttons or fancy redstone contraptions, but where's the anticipation? Where's the overarching reward for, for completing a challenge such as this? Well, this is a piece of game design that we call player feedback. Right now, there's not much of it. We've talked about it a little bit once we have our boss, and after our boss has been in the arena for a little bit, it will teleport up and we'll get those nice little shadow particles on the ground. This is player feedback. This lets us know that, oh, the boss is planning on doing something. We get a little bit of feedback there. But once we kill the boss, we get none of that. It just kind of unceremoniously falls over and we see the loot on the ground. Again, this is fine. If you're trying to fast track a boss in Minecraft, you're good. But it doesn't feel gamified. Now, I've had a lot of people ask me questions in the past on why when they create things, it doesn't feel like it's part of a game. Or when you download a whole bunch of mods for a game you really like, it doesn't, something feels like it's, it's disconnected, like it isn't all there. And oftentimes I tell them it's this lack of player feedback, this lack of connection that allows the player to immerse themselves in the experience that they're trying to partake in. Now a good masterclass in player feedback is a game like Enter the Gungeon. A very different game than Minecraft, it's actually a roguelike and one of my favorite games of all time. But the reason that it feels so fluid, no matter how many hours you put into it, is because everything is represented to the player in such a graphical way. Whether it's the bullet casings that fall on the ground after reloading your gun, or the torches that actually shatter and flicker when you shoot them, to the enemy's death animation and their corpses lying dead on the ground, to all of the various sound effects and light effects that let the player know the world around them is changing. This, to me, is one of the most immersive games you can play, despite it being pixel graphics. I will fight you guys on that all day. Pixel graphics are beautiful, okay? <laughs> but I digress. 
in Minecraft, what kind of player feedback do we have? Well, let's once again return to the final fight of the Ender Dragon in Minecraft. What actually happens when you kill the Ender Dragon? Well, for starters, you get that deafening sound effect that shatters every headphone user's eardrums in a 10 mile radius. <laughs> but beyond that, the Ender Dragon itself pauses whatever animation it's doing and slowly rises up into the sky. Then there's this brilliant light show as the dragon itself disintegrates with the sound effects still blaring in the background, and there's an explosion of experience all over the ground. Now I kind of wish there was a little bit more, maybe a, a text feedback or something to let the player know that hey the dragon's dead and the portal has opened, but you know that's not very Minecraft. But nonetheless, there is plenty of player feedback to let the players know, hey, this challenge that you've worked towards, it's complete. So as one final step in our creating a boss tutorial, let's just add a little bit of player feedback for once the boss is killed. Now, this can be something pretty simple, but we're actually going to attach it to this boss death line that we've already been working on. As of right now, the only thing that happens is once our boss is killed, we set boss lives equal to zero, and then we turn off our boss bar. So I'm going to show you how to add three effects once your boss is killed that will elevate your boss fight to the final perfect level. And funnily enough, they actually cover three very different aspects of gaming in general. The first thing that we want to add is going to be some sort of graphical representation. Now, we don't want to go ahead and play the gigantic explosive particle effect that happens when the Ender Dragon dies. Our boss fight's not epic enough for that. But maybe the undying totem particle effect. If we cycle through some of our particle effects here, you see there's actually plenty to work with here. And if we take a look at totem of undying and just play it around us by doing this, this little particle, as I zoom out and you can actually see it, is actually a great little confetti particle that you can use to determine, hey, something exciting has happened. Plus, it's also green, which kind of works for an exploding slime. So, once again, because we aren't tagging our players and we're just sort of using a radius because this is an easy boss tutorial, we can go ahead and play this particle effect once the boss has died at any player within 20 blocks. So the way we can do that is simply go into the command block, set all of these to be chain, conditional, and always active. We want to do execute as all players. And because of where this command block is specifically, we want to do distance within... Let's say 50 blocks just to be safe. And again, in case we have spectators, we can even go game mode does not equal spectator. And now remember, because this is playing a particle or sound effect, which we will get to in just a second, most of these commands want to originate at the command block that we're playing it from. So we also want to do positioned as at S. Now all we have to do is actually make our command, which is quite simply going to be particle the Minecraft Totem of Undying Particle at the local coordinates of the player. And we want the delta to be something like 2 by 2 by 2. This is sort of a volumetric cube of how big the particles are going to be around you. We can set the speed to be 1, as that is sort of the default speed, and the amount of particles to be 100. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Now, before we test them all, I'm just going to quick run through all three of these effects, and then we'll see them all in tandem. So now that we have our particle effect, the next effect that we want to add is a sound effect, just to let the players know that something victorious has happened, uh, especially in case any are blinded or not looking at the boss when it is killed. So once again, let's do chain conditional always active, and just like before, we want to execute as all players within the distance of 50 blocks, as long as their game mode is not equal to spectator. And then we also want to do positioned as at s or the people executing the command and once again we want to do run play sound and again you can actually cycle through and see all the different minecraft sounds there are loads at your disposal but the one we want to use is actually minecraft colon ui dot toast dot challenge complete you'll recognize this sound when you hear it as when you get those little advancement pop-ups at the top now, as for what volume track to play over, this is actually up to you. If you want to force your players to hear it, you can play it over the master track, as that is something they'd have to mute themselves. But if you want it to work with their settings, this might make sense over a hostile soundbar, because it is after you kill an enemy, of course. And it will be to the executing player, and we want the sound effect to originate from them. As for the volume parameter, we don't have to blare this. We can keep this at about a 5, considering the sound effect is already pretty loud on its own. You can put pitch if you want, but the default pitch is one. Okay, that's another one done. Finally, one more visual representation, and this is going to be a text pop-up. 
So there's a couple of different ways you can do this, and we'll explore variants of text in our intermediate boss tutorial, but we're just going to have a pop-up in the chat saying something like congratulations or the boss is dead, similar to how we did in the pumpkin video. So for this command, we actually just want to do a straight tell raw without any execute before, and we want to do tell raw at A, and again, we want to do distance equals 50. And this time, the game mode doesn't matter. Anyone should be able to see this message within chat as long as you're around the boss itself, whether you were a participant or a spectator. Now, as for the actual message, you can keep this to be whatever you want, and if it helps, you can actually design this in MC Stacker. This takes a little bit of handling, considering we're using text, which, you know, Minecraft gets a little wacky about. So instead, I've just copy and pasted what I have written, which is just an open bracket to let us know that there's a couple of different things going on here. And then we have text, the Slime King bubbles and dissolves. You've done it. Then we'll end the quotes, put a comma, add color, and then I want the color in chat to be dark green, and we'll end the little curly bracket. Set this to be everything we need, and press done. Okay, now these should be three visual effects that will actually give the players the feedback they deserve when killing your boss. Let's test it out. Sure enough, if we get up close and personal with our King of Slimes and give it a kill... You can see the particles, you can hear the sound effect, and sure enough, in chat, the King Slime bubbles and dissolves, you've done it. And that is how you end a boss fight. Of course, you could make this as fancy as you want. You could add fanfares, confetti, banners, all sorts of crazy stuff, mobs that get summoned, villagers that carry you away on a golden pedestal. Well, actually, maybe not that. That would that would take a little bit of <laughs> coding. But nonetheless, we have a little bit of player feedback now to show the players once the boss is killed. And with that, I say our boss is finally complete. Bar one final change that is going to help you so much in the long run. I got a lot of questions about this as well on my pumpkin tutorial, so I figured I'd save it for the absolute last step. We are having no more control over the boss after this point. In our summon boss line, at the very end, you want to make sure we go in with another chain command block. We'll set this, of course, to be a chain command block and always active. And we want to do scoreboard players set. And remember, our dummy scoreboard was called world king slime timer back to zero. Now, the reason you want this in your summon command instead of your kill command is because when the boss is summoned, you want to make sure the timer is always at zero. And if the boss ends up killing your players and the boss despawns naturally or you have to come in and admin kill it, that's not going to reset the timer to zero. Make sure this is your last command block in the chain. What this will do for you is every single time your players start the boss fight, it will always start at the right phase. You might have noticed as we've been testing sometimes as soon as I summon the boss, or maybe even 10 to 20 seconds later, is when the boss is doing certain things, like summoning its slimelings or doing the shadow jump, even though we set them to be very specific intervals. The reason for that is because we hadn't ever set the timer back to zero. The only time it was ever getting set back is in this command block right here. When it reaches over 400, it'll get set back to zero. But whenever you summon your boss, make sure you also set that the final command sets your timer to zero. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's it. Congratulations. Give yourselves a pat on the back and a round of applause because you have now successfully finished and making your very first easy boss in Minecraft. It was a long journey to get here, but we've gone through everything. We covered the five steps in how to make a good boss. We've completed them all within Minecraft. We designed our own arena. We set up timers and abilities for our boss. We learned how to make a boss bar show up on your screen, attach it to the health of another entity, and even have our boss drop loot without the use of a loot table. So that's it. Your boss is now complete. And although you do still have these rather unfortunate looking command blocks, well, you can always hide them underground or, you know, get creative. But look, I'm, I'm just here to teach you how to make this guy right here. Not, not really to make things look good. But we're not quite finished. Because even though our boss is complete, we still have one more thing to try out. That's right. Actually fighting the Slime King. So let's finish this once and for all.
And there you have it, everyone. A complete demonstration on the Slime King boss fight from start to finish. That was actually a little harder than I expected while I was fighting it in there. Maybe you want to make some tweaks to the damage and or buffs that get spawned about the arena. But regardless, that was awesome. We started a boss from conception till now and it, it worked. And you know what? I think this fits in Minecraft very nicely. So, as per usual, thank you guys so much for watching. These videos take a ton of time to produce and edit, and honestly, this whole project has taken several months at this point, from going to writing scripts, to testing out command blocks, to generating the boss, and getting all of the footage and, and editing things that we would need. This has been an exceptionally long project for these four videos, but I'm happy that it is now finally at a close. So, on that note, if you do want to see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff on how we built the arena, or you want access to these types of videos faster, then we do actually have a Patreon you can go and check out in the link down below in the description. There are a bunch of different tiers, so only support if you feel like you can. And you'll get a bunch of bonus features like seeing some of these videos early, a couple bits of extra content, and at the highest tier, I'm going to be zipping up this very map file for you guys to mess around and experiment with on your own. So for all the level 4 kips out there, you can look forward to this in a couple days to a couple weeks at max. It does take a minute to get all this stuff recorded, edited, and uploaded. But for everyone else, all of the commands for all four videos will of course be in the paste bin in the link in the description below. And hey, did you know I'm streaming now? Over on Twitch, we've been playing a ton of games, including Minecraft and other Nintendo related titles, over at twitch.tv forward slash mudkipninja. If you want to come say hey to me while I'm live and playing games or want to ask me some questions, that's a great place to do it. But if you'd rather do it in your own time, we also have a Discord you can join. Also by clicking a link down in the description, I realize now there's going to be lots of links in the description, huh? Okay. Well, either way, if you want to come and ask questions while I'm offline, there's loads of people in the Mudkip Ninja community that can help you answer Minecraft-related questions or just other gaming projects you're working on. I'd love to hear specifically what you guys are going to do about this boss tutorial, whether or not you're changing it, whether you're going to use your own commands and items to make it unique in your own. Tell me down in the comments or on Discord, wherever you desire. And finally, thank you to all of my subscribers that have stuck through the long production hiatus of trying to get this video produced, recorded, edited, and out to all of you. It truly means a lot that you guys all stick around to watch my content. And don't worry, we have plenty of more Minecraft-related content soon, a couple of which have actually been suggested by you guys over on my suggestions feed on my Discord. So you can look forward to some more smaller tutorials coming out, and then, oh man, maybe in another year's time we can get to the intermediate boss tutorial. We'll see. But... Until then, everyone, thank you all so much for watching, and from myself and the Slime King, see ya!